the old style of making subtitles is probably gonna die pretty soon because everybody is doing the same. So everybody's doing that whole captions with colors that change text and stuff like that. And after a period of time, like everything else, there's times where people just get tired of it and then it doesn't affect them. It doesn't affect retention that much and so on. So what is one new style that I've been seeing? And I think it will, maybe it was a style before, but it will come back or maybe it will just develop more now is the idea of mixing or compositing text with different fonts in a sort of like more artistic manner. And then maybe also add camera movements later on. So in this video, I'll quickly show you what is the best way probably of doing this inside DaVinci Resolve. Now we're going to do this all in the edit page because that is probably the quickest and most versatile way of doing this. So let me show you. So as you can see here, the actual thing is pretty simple, but it did take me a bunch of time because you have to play around with the different fonts and the letters and until you get so to something that you like. Now, if you don't have a predetermined style of like the fonts that you use for your branding, for your actual brand or just the style that you like, then the first time that you do this will probably spend a bunch of time just testing fonts and different stuff like that. So that's why I did spend a bunch of time on while doing these earlier. I've spent like maybe 15, 20 minutes just doing that and like trying to see what looked fine. And because of the other video that I'm working on is time sensitive, I had to just say, okay, let's just record this tutorial and show you. So let's start with the process. For that, I'm gonna actually just make a copy of this clip right here so we can know what is for, so what the process is. The first thing you want to do and the easiest way to do is is to get some sort of like idea of the pacing that you're speaking on. Let's say you speak like five words per phrase or something like that, then that's an easier way to composite five words. Uh, in this case, we have these, can we take a video? So that's a good amount of words without like uh, adding way too many words that it just feels overcrowded, right? So what I did first is I created a normal text or using a normal text, we're gonna add these as a base sort of like, so that we have an idea of where we wanna put these. The cool thing about these type of title, the normal title, which is this one right here, not the fusion title or the fusion text, is that here you can actually just on the same one, adjust the size of individual ones. So if you wanna change something, let's say play around with the size in the same composition, you can do that a lot more easily and that gives you a little bit more freedom. The next step would be to add another one, which will be our first word. For the guide, actually, let me just show you what I did here was I'll change the alignment to the left side. That's why it looks like it's aligned on the left side. And then also the anchor points on the left side as well. So if we change the side, the side moves from that anchor point right there. Now for the animations, the animation is pretty simple. But since on the normal text, we don't have these animation controls right here, what you have to do in this case is use the setting controls right here or the layout controls that are basically the same as any other clip controls that you get right here because those do have keyframes. This video is brought to you by the Paperfall effects. So check out paperfalleffects.com if you want to create realistic paperfall animations and add them to your videos in seconds. So in this case, you want to go a few frames and let's open the frame control. And I'm going to reset these so that we can know where things are properly. We're not going to use any of these controls for the position already because that will affect our animation that we make on these settings. So let's say I move these on these controls right here, but then I move the size right here. You can see that it messes things up. So we're going to do the animations first and then we're going to position our text. I'm going to start here with a little bit of a opacity animation and also a zoom animation. For the zoom, it's going to be just a little bit like that. For the opacity, we'll just bring this all the way to zero. And now we're going to go a few frames forward. Let's say six or seven. Now, this also depends on the speed that you're speaking. If you speak really slow, then you can have more time for the word to actually show up. Okay, we have the keyframes right here. So this is up to one again. Now, the next step is to actually ease in and out these keyframes, otherwise, the animation will be just linear, which is fine as well. If you like it that way, then you can just use that. We're going to open the curve right here and selecting these points right here, we can actually adjust the curvature of our animation. And that way it has a little bit more of an impactful movement. And that way we have a little bit more control of the way that we want it to look. 
like that. It looks pretty clean. Now we can just close these curves right here again and we can zoom out a little bit so we can see it. We have that first animation or the first word. Now uh, we can adjust the size using these. But for the position, what I did was I went to here to the viewer and turn on the transform viewer. And that way, when you move things around, just clicking and holding, then you have the position controls moving right here. And the animation will always be coming from the center of the word. So I'm going to move the, the word right here and set it right there. And then instead of changing the zoom, we're going to actually adjust the size of these so that it fits a little bit closer to our original idea. Now on this main one, we can also we can also adjust the fonts and make changes on the font um, to have different fonts in, its, in itself, right? Now, when I was doing it the first time, I just got the idea while I was doing to mix different fonts. So I didn't use that guide for the fonts. Right here, I just straight up change the font on the actual text the element itself. So we have the first guide right here. We have the can on the position that we want. Now for the we, we can choose a different font. So for that, first we have to align where the word starts. Can starts right here probably. So we're going to do these. And the we starts right there. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to change this to we, and I'm going to position the we near the we that we have right here. And then we can change the font to whatever you want. If you're not completely sure about what style of fonts you want to use, you can probably find online like different font combinations that look good. And that would give you a good idea of what cool fonts you can combine to make your text stand out a little bit more. So if we turn the guide we have right here, Okay, now we're going to do these ones again. Take. Now for the take, let's see. We're going to have to position in the where we want. And let's try to bevas. I usually use bevas for a lot of things because it's not that big of a, like it doesn't have that wide reach. So you can use bevas or the bevas font to like fit in tight spaces like these. Now, the next step would be to do the same thing again, a process for all the words. Now, this is a little bit of a time consuming process. That's what I was actually thinking of, like finding a way to create some sort of templates of like pre-made compositions of text. That way you just have to change the text and maybe adjust a little bit of the position, but I haven't got to it yet. By now, you probably understand what the process is about. For the actual outro, you can actually use keyframes as well. Or in this case, what I did was I just adjusted the fade out a little bit right here and had the first one fade start fading out a little bit earlier than the, la the next one right here. As you can see, it's pretty minimal, right? Now, let me show you a quick tip right here. Since on these normal text, you're not allowed to add effects or go into Fusion to modify things. One trick that you can do if you want to add effects like this one, like the shakiness, for example, right here, is that after you have your text ready, you can just simply turn this into a compound clip. Now, to turn this into a compound clip, just right click, new compound clip. And now on the compound clip, you can add effects, open effects, or pretty much any type of effect that you want, and then modify these effects on with like different values that they have. In this case, we have Motioner here which is a tool I uh, started developing two years ago, but I never completely finished it. So I haven't released that yet, but it, it has a ton of like, it's basically what I started was some sort of like thing like Mr. Horse Composer that's for Premiere Pro. Okay. Now in this shakiness, I just added a small shakiness because it's like floating around. The cool thing of, of using the viewer here as well is that you can change. They don't have to be just stacked like that on top, like it did. You can change things uh around move like to add a little bit of a special touch and style to it now in this case what i would do on the actual original video or the actual video that i want to put out is i wanted to mix this a little bit with some sort of camera movement so how can we do this well if you have an adjustment layer we can put the adjustment layer on top of everything and i have a dynamic zoom effect and if you have any sort of tool that allows you to move cameras around, then you can use that. Maybe, uh, what is it? Alex Text 
animation what is it called I can't remember the name of alex's tool right now but if you're an avid viewer or an editor you probably know what i'm talking about already so in this case what i want to do is zoom out but not as much just like that is good and i'm going to change the pivot point so i'm going to change the fusion view right here and move this a little bit the camera moves out like that and the cool thing here is that we can actually continue to animate things a little bit more while the thing is happening right and then I'll probably have to animate these a little bit more for the pivot point like these. Move this around. When I say two, I want these to go to the other side. So I'm going to move these a few frames forward and then move the place to this side. Zoom out a little bit, a little bit more maybe like that. Let's see. Maybe not zoom out as much. Now what I would do here is then go into Fusion and then we have to animate the spline keyframes right here. That way it looks a little bit more smoother. Now in this case, we don't want to have to animate the lookup. So I'm just going to turn those off and selecting these. I'm going to press F and T is in and out. So yeah, that is basically the concept of what you would have to do if you want to stand out a little bit more and just composite your text and make your videos a little bit more interesting in that sense. Now, it is a bunch of work. And if you work with clients and you will probably be getting, uh, maybe, I don't want to say you will, but you might be getting more requests from clients to do these type of like more interesting text compositions because clients will probably want to stand out a little bit more because they will notice that or oh, everybody's doing something. What can we do to make things a little bit different to stand out a little bit more and get more people to pay attention to what we're talking about, right? This is basically the tutorial. It's pretty straightforward. I did ramble on a little bit too much. Maybe I wanted to keep these a little bit under 10 minutes, but it's a little bit longer than that. If I make some sort of like tool or with text or pre-made animated composited or compositions of text, I will be updating you guys and letting you know about this. If you want me to create something like that, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can look into it as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video here in Swabi. Bye.